it's finally here. My complete guide to making octolapses of your 3D prints. It has been a long, long time since I first promised this video, but I hope you appreciate I've tried to make it as comprehensive as possible. And also I waited for the new version of Octolapse and have included some of the new features you'll find in that. If you're wondering what Octoprint is, well, it's a piece of software that normally runs on a Raspberry Pi to control your 3D printer. I've already made a video explaining how to install it and natively it does support basic time lapses, although they're pretty jerky. Octolapse is an awesome plugin created for Octoprint, created by someone called Brad, also known as Former Lurker. Its secret is to pause the print, move the print head out of the way as it takes a photo perfectly timed at the completion of each layer. The result is a 3D printing time lapse that seems to magically grow out of nothing. Now in my original Octoprint guide, I briefly covered Octolapse, but I was definitely a novice back then. What I finished with in that video was very jerky and definitely not satisfactory. Since then, I've been practicing a bunch and I can now get Octolapse to work on all of my 3D printers. Now the video description is gonna be your friend here. It's got comprehensive details of everything that I cover in this video. And it's also got links to everything you might like to buy to get this running, including Raspberry Pis and webcams. You can use a Raspberry Pi camera, but I found it harder to set up. Instead, I like to use webcams and for a time I mounted them on tripods. You can expect pretty good octolapses from this point of view. One of my recent videos covered a flexible system that I designed to be able to mount any webcam in advantageous positions for octolapses. Check out this cool top-down perspective. I have tested extensively two different webcams, a budget option for 35 US dollars and a premium Logitech option for US $70. If you wanna know the difference, the cheaper option is grainy. It appears more zoomed in. It doesn't have a tripod mount. It does 1080p and it might even be capable of doing 4K. The Logitech is twice the price. It gives a crisper image. It's much better in low light. It has a tripod mount and again, it can handle 1080p resolution. If you're after absolute quality, go for the Logitech. If you're just having an experiment, use any old webcam or the cheaper Chinese option. Time to get on with the actual guide. And this is a fairly long process to go through all the steps that might help you if you run into trouble. I'm gonna keep it as concise as I can. And that means glossing over some things that I covered in detail in my previous video. Your first step included in that video will be to use Win32 Disk Imager to flash an image of Octopi to an SD card. So after you flash the Octopi image to your SD card, you keep it in the computer and you'll be able to see a petition called boot. Now there's a couple of files I need to change here. I've covered those in another video, but firstly you need to set your Wi-Fi settings in this one here. But in this instance, we're gonna edit the one that says octopi.txt. It's important to do this with Notepad++, not the normal Notepad, otherwise all the formatting will be ruined. Now by default, every single thing is commented out which means this file isn't actually doing anything until we uncomment and make some changes. If you're using a USB camera, this is where you set your frame rate and your resolution. So we're gonna get rid of the hash on the front to uncomment that. And I like to run 1080p. So therefore I'm gonna set my resolution as 1920 by 1080. I've had success running a frame rate of 15. If we scroll a little bit further, if we were using a Raspberry Pi camera, we would uncomment this by deleting the hash and then set our options in a similar way down here. I have links in the description to the help documents that give you all of the available parameters. Now finally, if we want to be able to access the camera properties directly in Octolapse, we need to uncomment both of these and make a couple of changes. On the bottom line, we're gonna delete the slash N and on the second last line, we're gonna delete the hyphen Octopi to leave dot slash www and nothing else. There's a note in the description with more detail, but by changing these settings here, we lower the security, but as far as I can tell, it's just for the camera. So I'm not particularly concerned if someone has access to the focus and contrast and things like that of the camera. Once we've made these changes, we can save. Just in case this is your first install, we're gonna cover how to set up a printer profile. I've booted Octoprint up. If we come to the control tab, we see our webcam has loaded, but we haven't set up a printer profile yet. So I'm gonna to come to the spanner, printer profiles, and then we've got the default one, but instead I'm gonna add a new one. Okay, this is the important one. We need to get all of these details spot on. So just like the Ender 3, this is stipulated as 220 by 220 by 250. 
Some other printers such as the Prusa Mark III have some extra things to set up and that's in terms of the custom bounding box. It can actually go minus five in the Y direction. Therefore, it's important to acknowledge that and you'll get errors later on. And generally, you don't need to change anything in these other two. So we can just hit confirm. And then after that, click save. The next step is to install the plugin for Octolapse and I'm going to assume you know how to go to the plugin manager, search for it and click the button to install and restart. As we mentioned before, Octolapse works by moving the print head out of the way so the printer is still as it takes a snapshot. Therefore, it's very important to enter the correct printer parameters so it can calculate exactly what it needs to do. We're going to go through that process next. We are back in Octoprint and we're going to start our configuration. First thing we need to do is to click on the spanner to get to the general settings and then scroll down on the left hand side until we find Octolapse. And one thing that I've found has helped me in the past is to edit the main settings and then tick the one that says snapshot time. This is meant to help the accuracy and as it says if you're finding blobs on your print then simply come back and untick this. Let's scroll down to the bottom and click save. We can save our overall settings. Then we're back on the Octolapse tab. We're going to go through these one at a time. If your printer is not listed here, select any one you want and then we're going to click the gear to edit it. Now you'll notice here I have my slicer open side by side. I'm using Simplify 3D, but what I show you will also apply to Slicer as well as Cura. For the record, the profile that I'm using is one for an AlphaWise U20 built into Simplify 3D and all I've done is reduce the build volume to match the U30. We're going to start by renaming our profile. For the slicer type, I'm going to set it to match mine, which is Simplify 3D. And then you'll notice that everything is categorized in the same heading. So we have extruder layer addition speeds. We can see that matches these tabs here. So all we're going to do is come through one at a time and enter the settings from our slicer into Octolapse. A little tip with Simplified 3D, if you want to change the units between millimeters per second and millimeters per minute, you can come up to your tools, options, and then it's this top one here. Okay, I've finished copying all of these settings over. You'll notice it's giving me an error saying some of your speed settings are non-unique. It will work without addressing that, but I'm going to cover that later in the video, so just hold tight. Generally, the default settings in this section will be quite fine. And if we scroll down further, we're going to leave most of these things as is. We're going to keep coming down to the miscellaneous settings. And there's something I like to do, which is to set the snapshot command as a piece of G code. And that is G4 P1. G4 is dwell or pause. P1 is one thousandth of a second. We have such a short duration, which means that if we're printing with Octolapse, it's going to recognize that G code and it's going to be fine and trigger the snapshot. Otherwise, if we're not using Octolapse, it's hardly going to affect anything at all because it's so minute. Now, you might have guessed we need to update our slicing software to reflect this. So we're going to come to the scripts in Simplify 3D. We're going to change it to the layer change script. And I'm going to insert the same thing, G4P1. I'm going to update my profile. And keep in mind, anytime you update your slicing profile, you should really come back to Octolapse and update the same settings. In Slicer Prusa Edition, we can see if we come to Printer Settings and then Custom G Code. At the After Layer Change G Code, we can enter the exact same thing. In Cura, it's a little bit more tricky. You need to come up to Extensions, Post Processing, Modify G Code, and then there'll be nothing here, so you need to go to Add a Script, Search and Replace. Now I've got this down in the description. So you're better off copying and pasting it exactly from there so you don't get it wrong. This is a regular expression that searches for the phrase semicolon, layer, colon, and then the number afterwards. It will replace that with G4P1 at the start of every layer. Make sure you're saved in Simplified 3D and also make sure you save in Octolapse. That's by far the most involved section, so well done for completing it. And yes, there are other ways to trigger the snapshot besides using custom G code. In fact, if you're printing in VARS mode, you might need to use one of the other options, so feel free to experiment. The next thing we're going to do is set up some of the minor parameters that also go along with Octolapse. We're going to keep on working our way down, and the next one is stabilization. And this is what the print head does when it takes a snapshot. So there's all these different presets here. We have animated orbit. We have animated printing. And then all of the rest are fixed. And the one that I use the most is fixed extruder at back left. That's going to move the print platform forward. 
clear of the gantry and move the hot end to the left completely out of the way for the snapshot. You can see the hot end in position here at the back left. For the snapshot we're going to change it to G-code and then we're going to hit the settings tab. We can see the trigger type is set to G-code and that's where we set the G4P1 in our printer profile earlier on. The rendering is concerned with what happens after the video is made and how the MP4 file is created. Because I'm using it for YouTube, I like to have it slower and I figure I can always speed it up. But for most people, they'll probably want it on 30 frames per second. We're now up to setting up the camera, which of course in a time lapse is one of the most crucial aspects. The method I'm about to show you is covered in the Octolapse documentation, but not a lot of people seem to know about it. I'll take you through step by step with examples of what happens if you get things wrong. Setting up the camera is one of the most important things to get right in Octolapse. So what we're going to do is click the gear to bring up the settings and then we're going to work our way through them. There will be a default IP address for the camera setup and what we need to do is to click the test button and hopefully we get success so we don't have to do any troubleshooting around that IP address. Now the end of that IP address where the port is set to 8080 is very significant. If we copy this and then come up and duplicate our tab and then add the port 8080 to the end and hit enter, it'll take us to the direct interface for the webcam. Because we changed that text file in the boot partition of the SD card, it's gonna enable us to have a lot more control over setting up the camera directly through Octolapse. If you click on the static button, you'll get a single snapshot. If you click on stream, you'll get the live video feed. We'll be using that to calibrate soon, but in the meantime, let's head back to our main options. The most important setting by far is the snapshot delay, and that's how long it waits to let the camera take each snap for each frame as it's doing the Octolapse. One downside of my webcam mounting system is it naturally has a little bit of shake. So we need to make this number big enough so that when it takes a snapshot, it has time for the camera to stop wobbling. Otherwise, the webcam will be in a slightly different position for each frame, and we end up with wobble in our final time lapse that looks like this. The default value is quite small at 75, but I find most of my printers run quite happily with a snapshot delay of 500 milliseconds or half a second. For some reason, the firmware on some printers ignores the timing commands and we need a much longer value and we'll debug that later in the video. So I've moved my tab with the 8080 side by side with the Octolapse settings for the camera. And this is absolutely essential that I can see these side by side in real time as I'm configuring the webcam for Octolapse. I'm going to right click on the stream image and say open a new tab and when I switch to that it is actually a video not a static image. We're going to scroll down to custom image preferences and tick the box at the top. Now any changes we make underneath every time we hit apply now will be shown on the right hand side. Now the first thing we need to do is set up a test object which means moving our bed into the position the Octolapse will be taken and finding some sort of printed object to put in place so we can focus and set up the lighting for the camera. Skipping this step means there's a fairly good chance that your object will not be in the center of your frame and will be cut off or obscured in some way. Trust me, I've done this plenty of times. I've got my test object in place and yes, it's upside down, but it's irrelevant to our current setting. So we'll press on it and fix it later. You're seeing me start to experiment with lighting here and this is something I get wrong way too often. Natural daylight through a nearby window generally looks amazing, but the trouble is you have to finish it during the day, otherwise the sun will go down and ruin your time lap. My other frequent mistake is to forget to leave the light on during the octolapse and ruin it that way. I've settled on some lighting I think is appropriate, so now I'm going to start to play with the brightness, contrast, saturation and sharpness. You can change any value you want, click apply now and then a few seconds later, over on the right hand side it should update. Be careful with your combination of close lights and filament color because this one was completely overexposed and you can't see any details at all. Besides these basic settings, I'd recommend setting JPEG quality to 100 for the maximum quality Octolapse. You have similar parameters that you can tweak with white balance, exposure and gain, but one of the most important things by far is the focus. It's very important that you don't have autofocus enabled. So you should untick that and then trial and error with the absolute focus value until you can see sharp layer lines on your test object. Some cameras need a high number, some cameras need a low number, but ultimately what you're aiming for is to see some sharp contrast so you know everything is in focus. The last thing to play with is the power line frequency. And in Australia, we have 50 Hertz. You can Google for your country. Setting this correctly may reduce flicker in your final octolapse. Finally, let's fix that inverted image. We need to do it in two places. The first one is in Octolapse and we come up to Snapshot Transposition Options. I'm gonna set mine to rotate 180 degrees. We scroll up once more and hit Apply Now. Because we're not looking at the finished Octolapse, we need to change our second place to see our preview correctly. Scroll down to the bottom, click Save, and then come up to the main options for Octolapse. 
From the left hand menu, we're going to go to webcam and time lapse, and then we're going to use the two options there to flip the webcam horizontally as well as flipping the webcam vertically. Once again, even after we save this, we're looking at the raw webcam stream from its control interface. Therefore, when we go to the control or the webcam tab, everything will load correctly. Finally, before we proceed in doing our first Octolapse, we want to go to debug and set it to test mode. This will prevent any heaters from turning on and any extrusion from taking place, saving you time and filament while you iron out all of the settings. Trust me, it might be tempting to push forward, but you really want to stick with test mode until you've got all of this ironed out. Before we proceed, you should know that on the time lapse tab, you probably want to turn off regular time lapses and that you retrieve octolapses and normal time lapses from the base of that tab too. Time to start testing. To streamline the process, you want to take any object in your slicer and squish it to be as skinny but as tall as possible. The aim is to make it so you have to wait very little time between layer changes and therefore between snapshots. Keep the octolapse tab open and you'll get a preview on the little thumbnail every time it takes a new snapshot. You should be able to tell after just a few minutes of testing whether your image is stabilized or not and whether you need to increase the snapshot delay. Most of my printers work pretty well with this and I can have a snapshot delay of 500 milliseconds. This gives pretty good print quality and doesn't add too much to the printing time. The firmware on some printers however just doesn't like to play ball and on the AlphaWise U30 that I'm using as my guinea pig for this, I needed to up it to the maximum 5000 milliseconds because there's something a little bit out of whack in the way the snapshot command is interpreted and timed. If you're having trouble inputting the right snapshot delay time to get your image stabilized, here's a really crude trick that you can try. Hold your hand between the camera and the printed object while the layer prints and keep it there until the very last second when you expect the snapshot to be taken. You can monitor the result in the preview thumbnail and it works pretty simply. If you can see your hand in the preview thumbnail, it means it's taking the photo too soon and you need to increase the snapshot delay. If you can't see your hand, therefore it's the opposite and you need to reduce your time to make it take it earlier. Once you're able to stabilize successfully on test mode, you're able to turn that off and attempt your first proper octolapses. With any luck, you'll hopefully get a pretty good one early on. Even when your prints fail, it can offer a really nice insight into what exactly went wrong. I think it's probably appropriate to talk about the elephant in the room, and that's the effect on print quality. The print head is going to be oozing filament the whole time it's moved away from your object, and that means when it comes back to continue printing, it's most likely going to deposit that oozing on the surface of your print. The shorter you can get that snapshot delay, the less your print quality will suffer. In the newest version of Octolapse, there's a new feature to try and combat this. Let me take you through how it works. So remember when we were setting up our print profile and it told us there were duplicates, if you click on that message it will expand and tell you what the non-unique parameters are. From this point onwards our job is pretty simple. We go to that parameter and we change it very slightly. For example, my first layer speed and exterior outlines are both set at 50%, so I'm going to go into my slicer and set the first layer speed to 51 and then set it to 51 to match in Octolapse. There is no longer a clash and Octolapse can tell what is happening when for its advanced snapshot maneuvers. Simply repeat this until you have no non-unique speeds. Now when you come back to the Octolapse settings, you can click on the gear for the snapshot settings, scroll down until you find print quality feature detection. By ticking and unticking these various features, you can limit when it tries to take the snapshot, for instance unticking exterior perimeters so it's less likely to leave a blemish there. This new functionality is not really something I've experimented with, but I'd love to read in the comments how it's working out for others. To finish this video, I thought I would go all out and finally set up a nicely cropped image in focus with some really moody lighting. The result, while not perfect, is something I'm definitely happy with. Check this out. Still a long way from the quality of the Wild Rose Builds compilations, but at least I'm heading in the right direction. This video is long enough, so let's end it there. Hopefully it's given you all of the tools you need to successfully attempt octolapses. This has certainly been a very requested video, so hopefully it hits the mark. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.